Dialogue. Halfway between monologue and trialogue. My absolute favorite thing to write is dialogue. You get some characters bantering back and forth, making snarky comments. I love dialogue. Can't write action or narrative or description to save my life, but you need quip? I've got quip. Today, I want to outline what is, in my mind at least, the things that ideal dialogue accomplishes. If you reach the pinnacle of writing good dialogue, your dialogue will do these things. Not all of these things are always going to be possible, but for dialogue to be, quote, ideal, end quote, they need to be. Thing number one, ideal dialogue identifies the character who said it without any non-dialogue assistance. We should know what character said the dialogue without anything except the dialogue itself. No action beats and no dialogue tags. This is not always going to be possible, but if you're writing ideal dialogue, the reader should be able to tell the character who said it without any other help. Everyone has specific tics or words that they use often or ways that they phrase their arguments that make what they say distinctive. At the extreme end, they might use certain contractions or lose the G's on their ING verbs or use some kind of phrase too often. On the more subtle end, we might see that a character phrases their arguments a certain way or perhaps they lean on flowery metaphorical language. Maybe they refuse to swear. Maybe they are too loquacious compared to other characters. Maybe they say relatively little compared to other characters. Ideally, the reader should be able to pick out these subtle differences without too much effort. If you can structure your dialogue this way, it's also a really good sign that you have deep, well-developed characters. Good writers tend to use dialogue quirks as a method of characterization. Maybe the character avoids swear words because they were raised in a very strict household. Maybe a regional phrase or word slips into their dialogue, revealing where they were born. Maybe English isn't their first language, and so they slip into some of the common traps of people who learn English as a second language. Maybe they want to seem smart, so they use big words. Anything that you can work in subtly through dialogue that reveals something about the character can also work to distinguish that dialogue from the dialogue of other characters. And when the reader can easily tell what character said the dialogue, that's a sign that you're moving towards ideal dialogue. Next up, ideal dialogue should reveal how and with what emotion it was said without any non-dialogue assistance. Using jazzed up dialogue tags or adverbs or even action beats are all, in my view at least, inferior ways to get across to the reader how a given line of dialogue was said from an emotional standpoint. The way the dialogue is written alone should be enough to convey the emotion. Now this is not always possible, but if you can do it, it is usually better than the other methods that I talked about with dialogue tags or action beats or some other way to tell the reader what emotion the dialogue was said with. Terse statements can imply anger or unease. Obviously, if a character swears or makes demands, they might be agitated or impatient. Someone who's nervous may stammer or stutter or say something ridiculous. An anxious character might speak a lot more than they normally would or not say very much. A lot of this does go back through to characterization. If we know how the character normally speaks as a sort of baseline, then changes in their dialogue can indicate changes in their emotional state. For instance, if a character normally uses a lot of slang and we have a dialogue exchange where they're working really hard to use proper grammar, then it could maybe indicate that they're trying to impress people or maybe they're outside of their normal situation so they're a little nervous. One place where this gets a little more complicated is with subtext. Subtext is basically meaning that's implied beyond the dialogue. The emotion portrayed in the dialogue is sort of a lie with the actual emotion that the characters are feeling conveyed through non-dialogue parts of the scene. For instance, you might have a cordial exchange between two characters who are actually really angry at each other. The dialogue itself would be sort of cheery and upbeat, but the character's body language or the actions that they're taking outside the dialogue 
would indicate the underlying anger within the scene. If the reader can tell with what emotion the dialogue was said just by reading the dialogue, that's a good sign that you're approaching ideal dialogue. And lastly, thing number three, ideal dialogue exposits, characterizes, and advances the plot. In writing, dialogue is the only direct, non-abstracted record of narrative events that the writer has access to. In something like a radio play, you have the dialogue that was spoken, but also the sounds of events that are happening in the narrative. The narrator in that medium doesn't need to describe how something sounded, but it does need to describe how something looked. In movies or other visual mediums, we have access to all three. There's dialogue, there's sound, and also visuals. In a novel or short story, you don't have that. A lot of information needs to be abstracted and pushed to the reader through a narrator. Dialogue is the only non-abstracted record of events taking place in a story that is available to you, the writer. Although, because we're losing the tonality and all the other parts of speech, we just have the text, it is a little bit abstract. This fact gives dialogue a little bit more narrative oomph than its counterparts. This is why it's often better to get expository information out through dialogue and why good dialogue often does a lot of characterization. Explaining a crucial element of a character's backstory through narrative is kind of meh, but having that character relate it through a well-written dialogue scene is usually a lot better. I can't eat raisin bagels. My first partner always ate raisin bagels. He ate one the morning he was shot. I'll never forget the blood mixed with the cinnamon and cream cheese. That's a good way to expose a bit of backstory if that dialogue is contained within a natural sounding dialogue exchange. Just taking an expository info or characterization dump and putting it between dialogue quotes is usually not enough. You need to have a realistic exchange between multiple characters as a way to get that information across. If the dialogue is good and conveyed with a lot of emotion, it will be engaging for the reader and they will enjoy taking in the expository or characterization information that a lot of readers generally don't enjoy taking in when it's just written in the narrative. And this is a major part of what I think constitutes ideal dialogue. Dialogue should be a major force in your story. It should convey critical information and you should rely on it as a tool for both exposition and characterization. Just like I'm glad you relied on this video. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. If you wanna see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice related videos and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.